Haemophiliacs were exploited, abused, used, researched on. Their widows were abandoned, left with nothing but debt and horrible, horrible grief having watched some of the most undignified deaths possible in humanity from HIV AIDS, Hepatitis C and numerous other viruses that we are yet to own up to fully, let alone the prions and the other exposures that took place. Haemophilia life expectancy was now extended in a good way by these treatments. It was turned into a lifelong horror which was frequently inflicted not just on an individual, but on families, and left scars that have carried through to this day, despite in most cases, or some cases, many victims being dead for over 30 years. We need to recognise what's really going on here. Whole blood victims of contaminated blood deserve proper and complete support going forward because that's what the Scottish Government promised. It's what is the promise within the Skipton Fund that was set up by Westminster. But they're being deliberately used to try and hide what really went on in haemophilia, to cover up the true extent of death, and also in their press releases, they have become extremely clever in hiding the true extent of impact. We don't just die of liver disease. We don't just die of AIDS. We die of brain hemorrhages, cancers. Our immune systems have been destroyed. In the case of haemophiliacs, every treatment we received, in some cases for over tw 20 years, were loaded with so many viruses, our immune systems collapsed with each treatment. No one is well. Most of us are dead. Out of 87 infected with HIV in Scotland, only 22 survive. The Hep C victims have thinned down to less than 200 from 550 plus. This is a scandal, and the schemes that were proposed, even the generous one in Scotland, only mitigates future liability. It should not be seen as an end, because it isn't. The end results in a proper acknowledgement of the truth. Haemophiliacs were used in violation of the Nuremberg Code for medical research. Their lives were given a lesser value. We have witnessed in this country, and it has been 50 years now, a genocide and then a cover-up of a genocide. But then we live in a country where rich paedophiles get covered up for. We live in a country where we call selling arms that blow up children trade. So why wouldn't we use genetically definable little boys and girls for medical research, for the betterment of mankind? Well, you make your own mind out about that one. Each part of this has been a battle. It's a deliberate tactic by the civil service. They set it up these little challenges, and I know they're not little for those individuals involved, but in the scale of things, they are deliberate annoyances to distract the efforts and time of a group of individuals who are led by the sick and are poorly financed. Recently, as yesterday, I was told by a civil servant that, of course, we could always go to law to law to prove what is already in the Penrose report, despite his attempt to homogenise things. Page one admits a human rights offence that is so heinous it should disgust any decent person. Haemophiliacs were used to research viruses. It is confirmed. It was a violation of the Nuremberg Code. They still haven't told us how they managed to work out how the heat treated AIDS and killed it and said they killed it before they had an AIDS test and without any animal models to infect to make sure. They did it they did it straight to human beings. I want to like the SNP. I'm a nationalist. But I'm finding it hard just now. Because 
in all my years, 26 campaigning on contaminated blood, I can still smell the stench of bullshit and obfuscation. We haven't owned up to that. We haven't owned up to this. You could go to court for this. Ultimately, they're trying to bury the story. So I call upon everybody to learn, become informed, create art, watch arts that's created on it, follow documentaries made on it, learn about a group of people who created the safer blood supply that you all experience today, whose lives were sacrificed so that we could know about hepatitis C, so we could know about HIV, so that we could protect the rest of you. At best, we deserve a military level pension, don't you think? And recognition from back pay for service to our country. In my case, it started at the age of three. They knew by 75 they were killing us with Hep C. But what did they decide? They didn't decide to tell us. They didn't decide to try and make it safer. They decided to cut us open every time we died and see what damage had been done. We were nothing better than lab rats. And if that's acceptable in this new Scotland that's being proposed, there's something bloody wrong.